Right. So let's go over a couple of examples, um, and this will help you understand this pull method. It's actually very easy to use. Example one here. So we have a soil element that's subjected to a combination of normal and shear stresses. Okay. So we have sigma y, tau xy, sigma x, and tau xy. Okay. So we have these two sets of stresses on vertical and horizontal planes. And we're going to find major and minor principal stresses. And then the normal and the shear stresses on plane DE. Okay. So this is our plane of interest. So we want to know the shear and normal stress on this plane. So that's how we'll go. So I'm going to use, a, use this example to illustrate that pole method. Okay. To use this graphical method, the first step is to actually construct the Mohr circle. Okay. For this example, so we have these two orthogonal planes, plane DC and plane CB. We know their stresses. So we know the normal and shear stresses on these two orthogonal planes. Okay. So we can use these two data points to construct the Mohr circle. Okay. So that's this first step here. So these two points represents the stresses on that two orthogonal planes. Okay. So that's how you construct the Mohr, Mohr circle. And then the major and minor principal stresses can be read directly from the graph. So this is the major and minor. So it's about 171 or even 170 is okay. And this is about 30 if you read it from the graph. So basically read these uh, two values. That's your principal stress values directly from graph. And then let's look at the pole method. So for the pole method, Remember, there are two main steps. One is to locate the pole on the Mohr circle, and two is to use it to find stresses on any plane. Okay. So for the first step, okay. we want to locate the pole on the Mohr circle. To locate that, we first need to identify a known point on the Mohr circle. Okay. And for this problem, I'm going to use plane CD. So this is a plane where you know the stresses and the plane orientation. And there are other options as well. Okay. So for plane CD, we know the stresses on this plane. Okay. So on this plane, normal stress sigma, uh, let's call this sigma n. So that's the normal stress on this plane CD, and that's given to you, that's sigma y. And the shear stress on this plane is also given. So we know it's tau xy. And be careful with the sign convention. So this tau xy produces a counterclockwise rotation, or at least a tendency to rotate the counterclockwise. So that's a positive shear stress by our sign convention. So the shear stress on this plane Fifty kPa. Okay, so that's the known stresses on this plane CD, and if you write it in XY format, that's basically fifty, fifty. Okay. So fifty of normal stress, fifty of shear stress, and the orientation of this plane CD is also known. It's a horizontal plane. And the corresponding point on the Mohr circle corresponding to this plane CD is, as I mentioned, it's 50, 50. Okay. So basically you have uh, X coordinate of 50 and Y coordinate of 50. So X represents normal and Y represents uh, shear stress on the Mohr circle. Okay, so that's basically this point right here. So this point represents normal and shear stress on plane CD. So that's what I mean by a known point. Okay. So this is a point on the Mohr circle that corresponds to plane CD. And on plane CD, we know the stresses and we know 
the orientation. Okay. So that's the first step. So once you identify this known point, in as I mentioned, there are other options for C, B, A, B, and A, D. You know their stresses and orientation as well. Okay. So you can pick other points. In the next step, starting from this known point, draw a line parallel to the plane orientation. So for plane CD, we know it's a horizontal plane. So this is a line, horizontal line, parallel to that plane. Okay. So parallel. Remember this 50-50 point represents the stresses on plane CD. And this horizontal line is parallel to that. And this line is going to intersect with the Mohr circle. And that intersection is a pole. Okay. Again, a unique pole for each more circle. So there's only one pole for each more circle. So we identify this pole on this more circle. Once you got this pole, then the next step is to use this pole to find the stresses on any plane. Okay. So that's step two. Okay. So again, this is a pole. And for this problem, we are asked to find normal and shear stress on plane DE. Okay. So this is our plane of interest. So the plane of interest is plane DE. So this plane DE is at 10 degree angle from the vertical direction. So we're going to draw a line starting from the pole that is 10 degree from the vertical direction. So that's 10 degrees. And this line is parallel to DE. And this parallel line is going to intersect with the Mohr circle again. And the intersection basically represents the normal and the shear stress on that plane DE. Okay. And you can read it directly from the graph. Okay. So this is basically tau n sigma n on plane DE. So you can read these values from this graph. Okay. And for this example, this is approximately 164 in negative 30. So that's how you get the normal and the shear stresses on this plane D. For example one, actually, this is not asked, but I want to show you that uh, you can equivalently, equivalently use these two equations to find sigma n and tau n on plane D. Okay. And you just need to be careful with theta and the size of your stresses when you plug in this. Okay. So for this example, so if we use equation 10.3 and equation 10.4, So remember, theta is an angle from the horizontal direction. And we're given this 10 degree, which is from vertical direction. So the angle from horizontal, this is 80 degree. So if you want to use this equations 10.3 and 10.4, the theta here is actually a negative value. It's negative 80 degrees for that two equations. And then sigma x this is a positive stress, same as uh, that sigma s in equation 10.3, 10.4. And sigma y also positive in that equation. So it's consistent with our problem here. So it's 50. And then the tau xy here, that's a little bit tricky. Okay. So tau xy, 
in that equation for vertical plane, this star xy actually represents a counterclockwise rotation. So there's a positive shear stress on the vertical plane. And for horizontal plane, this is a negative shear stress okay, by our sign convention. And this is opposite to uh, the signs in our problem. So this is actually a negative shear stress. It produces a clockwise rotation. And on the horizontal plane, it's a positive. So this means if you want to plug in your shear stress value into these two equations, so this tau xy should be negative. Okay. So it's opposite to what's in that two equations. Okay. So then the rest are just plug-in numbers. So I'm just substituting all these values into equation 10.3 for sigma n. And this is about 164 kPa. And then that tau n value. And this gives us negative 29.9. Again, when you're plugging in equations 10.3, uh, 10.4, make sure you understand the meaning of theta and also the signs for your stresses. Okay. So you should end up with about the same value. Okay. So 164 and 29.9.